In the first part of this series, we started making our system uh, to handle items. So we made some uh, data assets to represent normal items, and we also made a data asset type to represent specifically weapons. And you can do whatever you want with this and make like food items and whatever, whatever, whatever. Today, we're going to actually implement that into a inventory system, at least the beginnings of one. It's actually going to be remarkably simple. So let's get started on that. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go into my actual character now. And on the character, we're going to be adding a component because the inventory we're going to be making is going to be in components that we can add to any actor that we want. So that way we can add inventories to things like enemies. So we can use those as things like drop tables, potentially. Or we can add inventories to shops. So the shops actually have an inventory and they will run out of items. So you can't infinitely keep buying things and so on and so forth. And then those inventories could restock. You could make interesting systems where NPCs trade with each other and their inventories are fully dynamic. If you can think of it, you can do it with a flexible system like this. So this is going to be really quite cool. Let's get started by making that component though. So I'm going to go back into the root of the project here. We're going to make a blueprint class, which will be an actor component. Not a scene component, a actor component. Because a scene component is a component that has a transform, a physical location in the world. An actor component is a component that just will hold some data for us. So this will be our BP inventory component and the inventory component for the time being is going to just hold a couple of values we're going to add some functions to it as well in a moment but for right now let's get started with a variable and that will just be our inventory size which we will make a integer for obvious reasons let's also uh, expose it and set the default inventory size to something like 16. Now we're going to need to hold a item. And the way we're going to do that is through referencing those data assets. Uh, but I'm going to make a structure to hold that first. And I'll show you why in a second. So go up here to blueprint and we'll make a structure. And in that we will call this uh, str for structure inventory slot. In the inventory slot, we're going to add a couple of bits of data. I personally like having a bool in here to let us know whether or not there is an item here. So if we're looking through our inventory, we don't need to actually look, is there a data asset? We don't need to look how many items are there in the slot. We can just look at the bool and say, hey, does this slot contain an item at the moment or not? So we'll just call this has item. Then the next variable is going to be our stack size. Some items you might want to be able to stack up higher than others. If in your game everything is going to stack up infinitely or going to stack up to like 999 or just 99 or like for Minecraft purposes, 64, stuff like that, you don't really need this. But for a lot of games, it could be useful to have a stack size. And we'll go back into the item data asset in a moment and add the stack size per item as well, because this is going to get filled in by the item itself. And then adding in one more variable, this is going to be the item assets, which will be a BP item object reference. So now that we have this structure, we can go back into our inventory components and add that as a variable. So let's call this the inventory. And the type will be our structure inventory slots. For now, let's also expose that real quick. By default, it's just going to be a normal variable, which has uh, one value. So we can say, hey, does this inventory, which is one large, uh, have an item? What is going to be its stack size? And what item is in this slot? Now, if we come up here and we change this into a array instead, we get multiple item slots that we can populate like this. So that's quite neat. Now, unlike actors, components don't have a construction script. So we can't make a true construction script in which we set up the construction for this component. What we're going to do instead is we're going to make a function uh, and we'll just call this component construction or let's call this inventory constructor just so that we know what this is like. And, and then we can either run this in the construction script of whatever actor that we're working with or we can just run this on begin play, potentially both. 
And what we'll do is we'll get our inventory array here and we will get our inventory size. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a entry into this array for how many inventory slots that we have. So we can do that with a uh, for loop. So a normal for loop, not a for each loop. And there the first index is going to be, uh, in our case, let's say it's easiest to keep this at zero. And our inventory size, this is quite important just as a general programming thing, because we're starting at first index zero. If we're going to go up to 16, that actually gives us 17 slots. So what you could do is you could say start at index one, that works, or what you could do is um, we're gonna go up to our inventory size minus one. And then in the loop of that body, all that we will do is we will add just a new slot. It can be empty, doesn't really need to have anything put into it. We just want to make a new empty slot. We also though want to make sure that we're not adding any more slots than is altogether necessary. So we should also clear the array before we start this up. Do be aware though that if you run this function, that does mean that you're going to clean out your inventory. If you run this function for any reason while there's items in the inventory, it's going to remove all of those items. It's going to just delete them. Since we're only going to be running this at construction or at begin play when there's no items in the inventory yet, it doesn't really matter. If you call this during gameplay at some other time, uh, do be aware that you only call it if you have your current inventory stashed and saved somewhere safe. So you can reload that data back in after whatever you've done. Generally just better to avoid using this function during gameplay altogether. Now on begin play, uh, we'll just run the inventory constructor. And now if we go into our third person character, uh, we can just add our inventory components in which we can see our inventory size is 16. And if I just simply uh, start up the game here and I uh, go into my character here, open up my inventory components, we will see that the inventory now has 16 slots that we can uh, work with. They're all empty though, so they all have no item. Stack size is going to be zero, and our item asset in this slot is nothing because they're all empty. An alternative way to do it uh, is not to call this in begin play, but instead what we could do is we could call this on construction in our character instead. If you do it this way, you will have to call it on construction in every single character that you're working with. So that can be a little bit bothersome, but it also can be a little bit more flexible. So we can say uh, inventory constructor runs on construction. The big upside of which is if we uh, take, in this case, our third person character, the idea would be that this, for instance, would be a enemy that has an inventory that will drop upon death. Uh, if you just drag this into the map here uh, and you go into the inventory component, even before begin play starts, we already have access to the inventory slots now and we can populate them however we want. Once again, do be aware if you have this with running it in the constructor, it will get overwritten if you also run this at begin play. So you probably don't want to do that if you plan on populating inventories like this in the world through the viewport. Generally speaking, uh, this is what I personally like best. And this still functions more or less the same way uh, for the player. If all goes well, because if I go in here now and I go into the inventory component, I still have my 16 inventory slots because the player gets spawned in on construction runs and I get my inventory slots that are all empty. Oh, and one more option that we could do instead of calling it through another construction script or at begin play is we can do this inventory constructor. We can set this to be a call in editor function and what that will allow us to do is if we have an actor that we don't want to call this on begin player or on a construction script for whatever reason uh, construction scripts tend to rerun when you move characters which would clean out the inventory which would be really annoying uh, so if you just drag a character or whatever into your scene and you go into the inventory component we now have a button here that says inventory constructor and when i click on that it generates the inventory slots just like that 
Okay, so now that we have a basic setup for our inventory component, uh, we probably should wrap up here. But next time what we're going to do is we're going to program in the functionality for adding and removing items to that inventory component, because that is quite complex in and of itself. Because what we need to do is we need to check whether or not we have empty space in our inventory to begin with. And if we don't, uh, we need to not add the item. And if we do, we need to add the item. But then if we have a inventory slot that already has the item that we're trying to pick up, it should probably add it to the stack rather than in a new inventory slot. And it's all like, there's quite a bit to it. And I think we should probably push that off into its own video next time. So as always, the link down below in the description to the Patreon and for YouTube members, you can download the project so far to your liking to play around with and see how everything works. And next time we'll be back with a new updated project for you to check out. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 